Okay, new problem. <clears throat> Still looking at bending stress. Uh, all right, so let's look at this. This beam is subjected to a moment of one kip foot. So they give us a moment. Don't have to calculate that. Uh, determine the maximum bending stress in the beam. Also determine the resultant force the bending stress produces on the top board A of the beam. So we'll look at that later. First, let's find the um, maximum bending stress in the beam. Then we're going to find the force that the bending stress produces right here on the top board um, at A. All right, so we know that <coughs> bending stress, let me get it out here. Uh, bending stress is MY over I. Uh, we've got the M, the maximum uh, would be <coughs> the Y that takes it to the very, very top or very, very bottom. Um, and then the I. We, they didn't give us the I. We've got to calculate the I. We've got all these dimensions right here. So let us calculate the I. Now, there's uh, two ways to calculate this I. Either think about it as <coughs> one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles. Or, I'm going to try this because for symmetric I beams... For symmetric I-beams, it's helpful to think about this <coughs> as a solid rectangle minus, minus these two rectangles. <coughs> so the I of the solid 1 12th B H, so let's see, 12... Uh, and 3, 15 cubed. <coughs> and that solid rectangle is already about the neutral axis. Okay, so another thing about this one here is because the top was symmetric to the bottom, the neutral axis um, is right down the middle. So we didn't have to calculate the centroid for this one. Uh, no, the neutral axis is right down the middle. But you do have to calculate the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia would be 1 12th <coughs> bh cubed if this was a solid rectangle and then minus minus these two so minus 1 12th b if we look at the base <coughs> for these these are six inches long one inch uh, so base of 2.5 height of 12 cubed and we are we have two of those, and <clears throat> do you notice we didn't have to use the, par the parallel axis theorem because the middle of all, of all of those shapes, the middle of those, <coughs> were down the middle of our beam. So that is one benefit for using this method of, of thinking about it as a solid, solid rectangle minus these uh, two areas that are cut out is that everything's about the neutral axis. Don't have to use the parallel axis there. All right, so I've got I, 967.5 inches to the fourth. All right, so the maximum would be M, so one kip foot. All right, we'll have to think about those units. Y, <clears throat> the maximum would occur either the very top or the very bottom. It's symmetric, so I don't have to calculate both of them. I know the top is exactly the same as the bottom. Just one is in compression, one is in tension. <coughs> so this, let's see, it'd be 6 inches to there and another 1.5, so 7.5 inches. Over... 967.5 inches to the fourth. Uh, I'm looking for a stress. <coughs> so I'm probably going to look for KSI or PSI. <coughs> um, and so this, yeah, right here, this foot, I need to change to inches 12. So multiply times 12. Then I've got KSI. Then I've got KSI. But it's actually a, a very small 0 0.0930 KSI or 
93.0 PSI. <clears throat> so that is the maximum bending stress. Um, and that is at the very top or the very bottom. Now, for this moment right here, can you visualize that that type of moment would create compression on the top half, tension on the bottom half? Compression on the top half, tension on the bottom half. Now, if we were really careful with our positives and negatives, um, we the the equation is negative my over i, and so <coughs> that's so this would be negative. This moment would be a positive moment just because of the way it's drawn out here. This uh, y uh, on the top would be positive seven point five on the top. And so I would have gotten a ne negative uh, 93.0 <coughs> for the bending stress at the very top. Okay, uh, but now let's look at this second question. Very interesting. Determine the resultant force the bending stress produces on the top board A. <coughs> Alright, so we've got all this stress on the top board acting on this area of the top board and so we want to say okay what's the resultant force of that it's kind of like a distributed load on the top and what is the resultant force let's look at this from the side so if we were looking at <coughs> at <coughs> this i beam from the side it, it would it would have this distributed load so what we're asking is on this top flange this top board what does this stress what is the equivalent force due to the stress on the top of that board all right <coughs> what is the equivalent stress Or what is the equivalent force due to the stress on the top of that board? Why might we why might we need to know that? Uh, well, if we are st uh, nailing this top board to that middle, <clears throat> if we're nailing the top board to the middle, uh, we might need to know. Okay, what 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 is the what is pushing on that top board that that, that those nails need to keep it together okay so we know the stress and it's a distributed stri distributed load type of stress <clears throat> we've calculated that it goes to a maximum of 93.0 psi right here to um i, I kind of need to find out what is what is the value right here I could do that by doing similar triangles. All right. And kind of find this height right here. If <coughs> if 93 over 7.5 what is the height at 6? <coughs> The height here would be 74.4. So if I have a distributed load that kind of goes from 74.4 to 93.3, I'm just going to find the average, the average of that stress at the top. <coughs> well, before I find the average, all right, we're, sorry, we're looking for a force. We're looking for a force. <clears throat> we know that the stress is force over area, and units help us out here. But I'm going to take the average stress times that cross-section area of the top beam, and that will let me find my equivalent force. So that's what I'm doing, doing right here. So <clears throat> the average... 93 and 
and the cross-sectional area of that top beam, 1.5 by 6. All right, 753 pounds <coughs> is what I've got. Now take a step back and look at that, you know, MY over I. So if we want to find the stress at one point, for instance, the maximum stress at the very top, we could do MY over I. <clears throat> but if we want to find the equivalent force due to the stress, then we need to look at that stress as a distributed load and multiply it times the area that it is acting, right? But this is linear, so we can take the average stress on the top of the board and multiply it times the cross-sectional area of the top board <coughs> to find the equivalent force. So it's almost as if this top board has a force of 753 pounds. Uh, so that's helpful to know that these nails... <coughs> need to uh, be able to hold that uh, 753 pound force.